Hey everybody, uh, this will be a quick little video on export settings and some of the things to look for uh, when troubleshooting file size in InDesign. So uh, same portfolio as before, um, uh, one I have here. When it's finally all ready and you're actually ready to export, you're happy with everything, um, the best way to do this is under File, go down to Export, surprise, surprise, um, and name it something, and then you have a few different PDF options. I generally recommend the print option, regardless of whether you're printing or not, uh, because it gives you the most control over your output settings. So, name it something. So I'm gonna start with, uh, so there's the standard high quality print here. Uh, just as a default, this is fine for making print media. Don't need to make any changes to it. If you do it, just do high quality print. This will be fine for something you could send to a physical printer to get the best quality PDF you can do. Um, however, if you are exporting for sharing purposes or for using online or specifically for the co-op, which has a very, very small file size, um, this will never get you there. It's gonna be way too large. So we want to go down to the second category here under on the left where it says compression. Um, these numbers here are really what's going to define your file size. So basically what this is saying is for any color image in the scene, which is going to be the majority of your images, uh, it will take any images that are higher than 450 pixels per inch and make them only 300. Now 300 is also very large. Um, so for sharing purposes, I like to make this number 200, that number 200, and then set the image quality to high. Same thing down here for uh, grayscale images. You may have a few of these, maybe some drawings that you've um, scanned and imported, they may be in grayscale. Most are probably going to be uh, full color images. Although anything saved as a grayscale image will inherently be a smaller image than something saved as a color image. There's less data there, less it has to remember. So that can be a thing that you can do with, again, 2D drawings that you've drafted or something where color information isn't necessary uh, you can convert that to a grayscale image and theoretically there you won't have any change. Um, I can show how that's done as well. Uh, monochromatic, you probably basically don't have any of these. I've never adjusted these and they really don't make a difference. So I just leave that as is. Um, and that's really it. You would hit export at this point. It might give you some warnings if you have overset text or if you're missing links, um, but that would be how you do sharing. I'm not going to hit export because my portfolio is something like 60 pages long with lots of high quality images in it. Um, the export process for me takes about 15 minutes on this computer. So it can be a bit lengthy and the more you put in your portfolio, the more images, the more that's in there, the longer that will take. So be prepared when you press this button that you may have to set your computer down and leave it for a little bit. Make sure it's uh, not on battery power so it doesn't run out. Um, also, when your computer is doing intense things like exporting or rendering, sometimes it could be a good, good idea to not leave it on your bed or something where the sheets and the comforters will be insulating it from the bottom. Put it on a nice solid surface so airflow can happen. And if it really starts getting hot, you know, get a little desk fan or something and put it out your computer. It can actually make a big difference. Um, it can cool your computer down so it's not painful to touch. And actually a cooler computer actually also runs faster. So. Just a few things to think about. When you are ready to do the next level down, the five megabyte file, uh, I would first start by lowering this not to 15, but to 150, 150, same for grayscale, 150, 150, and potentially setting compression down to medium. And see where this gets you. Um, this might get some of you all the way to five megabytes. For, for a lot of you, you may have to continue uh, dropping this number. This number is gonna make the biggest overall difference in the uh, file size, because uh, number of pixels it, um, really makes the big difference in uh, how big your file is. I wouldn't, in general, ever go to image quality below medium, as it starts to look really not great. Uh, you get a lot of artifacting, a lot of image reconstruction stuff and the compression that really just doesn't look very good. Um, in general, you know, there's, you can keep going down, so we'll only uh, limit you. The bottom number here has to be larger or equal to the number above. But 
uh, go down to 100. I would in general try not to go much lower than that. You know, as I've mentioned in previous video, screens are typically in the 115 to 120 DPI. So if you start going much lower, uh, you might run into issues where your PDF um, just starts inherently looking blurry when someone views it on their screen. Um, the next thing, of course, is removing pages can be an option. If you just have less pages, less spreads, that means less um, information is there, and it means you have a higher chance that uh, your portfolio will be small. Um, the next thing to look for are the problem areas. So this image here, uh, I'm going to go up on my panel here that says links. If this isn't a peer, um, you have these little things here that will lead, uh, lead you to it. This should be links. If that's not appearing for you under workspace, just go back to classics essential and that should appear for you at that point. Any image you click on, it'll take you to that link, which gives you some useful information such as the file format. This is an Adobe PDF, uh, number of pages. That's, uh, it's a multi-page PDF. So that doesn't really matter here. Um, the file size, which does matter. Um, and then there's a bunch of other things. I think your file path is down here and scaling. Uh, but the thing to look out for is this image by itself, well, at least of the seven pages, is 5.3 megabytes, which is already in and of itself larger than the file size limit that you have for the co-op submission. So if this were a single image, um, that would mean that you're printing 5.3 megabytes of information into your portfolio, and that cannot be compressed. It is vector data, which looks very blurry, um, but that's because we're... Uh, and InDesign is always previewing. It doesn't want to show you the full resolution image because that can start slowing things down. If you ever want to see the full resolution Im image of each page, you can go to Overprint Preview, um, which will load in the full res, but it tends to be very slow. So I don't tend to recommend working that way. You can also individually set images to use the high quality display if you wanted, um, or even the fast display or the low quality display if an image is really problematic for you. But so if I identified that this was indeed the issue that was uh, potentially adding a lot more data and a lot more size to my file than I wanted, the easiest thing to do would be to edit the original and open it in, um, uh, in Illustrator and essentially open that file and export a JPEG or a PNG um, to wherever you're keeping your files and just drag and drop that on top of this. If you did it right and save the same border, it should actually just fit right into the same place and you shouldn't have to do anything else. Uh, but that image as a JPEG can be compressed, whereas this image as a bunch of vector line work cannot be compressed. Um, so that will make a big difference. Um, so in general, that's gonna be your best option. Those tend to be the biggest problem areas. Anything like this guy, which is a TIFF file um, or a Photoshop file, those will be compressed and should work just fine. Um, sometimes Photoshop files can have vector stuff in them, at which point it may be a good idea to also export a JPEG and replace that. Um, I usually leave Photoshop files in the uh, portfolio because they're usually not an issue, but it can be another thing if you're really going down the list and still trying to find areas to uh, save on file size. Um, so that's gonna be it. Uh, typically, you know, anything you click on again, so actually this says it is a uh, AI file. So I thought, I thought it said uh, PDF. It's weird, it says PDF here, but it says AI there. Um, don't know what I did wrong there. Uh, but typically you can go to edit with and it should open uh, with whatever software. And since this is, I guess, really actually a PDF, it's not giving me uh, the Illustrator option, uh, which otherwise I would just do. So these guys, if I were to do that and see if this works open with nope how about this one there you go so open with photoshop the nice thing is when you do this it'll open that file for you and as soon as you save it it'll actually bring you back to indesign and update the file for you so you can see your changes so if i were to say turn off a bunch of stuff let's actually just turn off the base layer so if I turn this off and hit the save button, and of course it's a big file, so it takes a second to save. Da -de -da. 
then come back to InDesign, you can see it'll automatically update with the new version of that file. And actually, I kind of already like that better. It's funny how that happens. And of course, uh, hitting Shift W will take you to full screen. And it should load in the high resolution images of each thing. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks.